So uh, we have a leak directly below our drain here in the bathtub. And uh, so the ceiling on the first floor is getting all nice and wet and showing mark signs of being wet. And I went behind it, looked here, and I saw that, yep, directly below the, um, the drain was getting wet. Next thing I did was cut a hole in the ceiling on the first floor and confirmed, yep, that drain right there was leaking some water. So now I got two holes, one in the upstairs closet and one in the downstairs ceiling. And sure enough, I confirmed it. But uh, I'm kicking myself a little bit right now. So yeah, I'm kicking myself a little bit because I'm back here in the bathroom. And after a bit of research on YouTube, of course, I found out that all I really had to do was take this piece out of the drain. Uh, pretty simple. All you do is put that in there and you use your, your vice grips here and just turn it out. It pops right out pretty easy. And what you're supposed to have is plumber's putty on this corner edge on the inside corner right here where my end of my fingernail is. And that's supposed to be all the way around. And when I found out and opened her up, there's only that little bit of plumber's putty still there. I don't know if that was a bad install or if uh, plumber's putty you know, slowly deteriorates over time, but I didn't have to make both holes in my sheetrock. <laughs> so I'm a little upset, but I'm also a bit happy because I'll put some more plumber's putty on here. Put it back in, and now I can at least see from both of my holes if there's still a leak. But uh, word of warning, if you see some water underneath your, uh, your bathtub, um, check this out. It might save you putting some holes in your sheetrock and uh, save you a lot of time. But the, the hole in the ceiling downstairs, that's going to take a little while. But the hole here isn't the worst thing in the world because I'll turn this into a nice little door. And then we'll have access to this whenever we need. Just whenever there's an issue on the bottom, yeah, we're gonna have to go from the uh, the ceiling from downstairs again. But uh, just a little tip. Uh, hopefully, you won't make a hole in your ceiling like I did, and you'll uh, be able to fix the leak, maybe without making any holes. Here we are, back in the bathroom. Um, slight change of plans. I ended up. Bumping into our, our neighbor, uh, Gary, once again, uh, randomly at Home Depot. So I was going to pick up the plumber's putty, and he recommended to use 100% uh, silicone instead of the plumber's putty because that's known to deteriorate over time, which is most likely what happened here. So uh, this uh, silicone caulk and sealant uh, just happens to be mold-free, happened to be what I have. So we're gonna use that. And the first thing we had to do was clean up this as kind of best we could. That's what I already did. I cleaned up its mating part as best I could. We're gonna put some caulk on it, or some silicone on it, uh, and uh, put her back together and hope for no leaks. So I've always found with doing caulk or silicone to have one of these nitrile gloves on. I find that it just, spreads the uh, silicone nice and easy and doesn't permanently stick to your fingers for the next couple days so so that's why I do that and we're just gonna glob this on actually pretty thick because I want to make sure that this does not happen again put her on put a nice thick amount on there because I don't want to deal with this ever again so I'm, a, I'm not only going to put it on the edge here and get a nice bead in there. I'm also going to put it at the end of the threads when we're done with this. Now that I got it on there, we'll just put her on in and put her down. And let's hope for the best. Soon enough, this should start uh, oozing out a little bit of caulk, hopefully. 
found that uh, a wrench works really well in that cross. Uh, oh, there we go. We got just a little bit of oozing over there. So that's great. And I'm just going to tighten it down a little bit. A little bit further. Make sure we got it tight. did was just get my finger in there with the glove on and get that excess out of there so so hopefully you're, you're able to see that and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean off my glove and then we'll wait about a half hour for this to set and hopefully we'll have no leaks so there's the hole in the uh, ceiling and uh, when I was cutting, I thought I had all four sides with nice two by fours to attach. So uh, I was gonna screw a screw right in to the two by four, the, the joist or the wood, but unfortunately, on the fourth side, there's this about two inch gap. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two by four, well, a uh, two by four. I'm gonna cut it to size so it fits right in the joist. I'm gonna put it in like that and I'm gonna put screws in right here and then I'll be able to screw both this piece of sheetrock into here and then the whole piece that I cut out back into there. And hopefully that'll do the trick. So uh, here's the hole. The hole in the kitchen is uh, filled up so now we got to do a lot of spackling so good news is uh, we tested out the drain upstairs no leaks at all thanks to the silicone we waited about an hour for it to cure and uh, we just did our first coat of spackle and all that pink's gonna turn white and then we'll start sanding and make it flush and look nice so this is the hole in the closet uh, we're gonna start working on a access door for this. We cleaned up the door quite a bit. Uh, we got the corners all caulked or, or wood puttied up, whatever you choose. And just a quick little lift here, and that'll slide down and out. And boom, complete access. I'll probably just uh, spackle that just to make it look nice when we end up coming through this bathroom and repainting it in a couple days or a couple weeks later but uh, that's that's the uh, the trick here and I went with this design for the door um, because I wanted the most amount of access in here uh, for this area I know I could have probably gone a lot further up uh, along the wall um, but uh, for what I needed and what I was doing, this worked out well. Um, so if you were going to do a traditional door where it actually opens up, um, it would have just needed too much more supports in here. And I, I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to give as much access as possible. So that's why I picked what I picked. And we'll see if we can put her back up with one hand. There we go. And in place. So there it is, nice and flushed, and the only thing it's got to do is get a little coat of white coat of paint on it to cover up those those nail heads. So it looks good and ready to go. All right, so the patch in the ceiling in the kitchen is finished. We painted it, and you can tell you can see some little bits of it, but that's because we had some old paint we used, I think. Um, but yeah, in general, it looks pretty good. I did make the lighting in here uh, the best I could so you can see the outline of the square. Uh, so uh, you can tell what's going on. And, but uh, in general, you can't really tell that's up there when the lighting isn't the perfect way. So uh, that project is done.